the biggest big moment I think I had early was all right, damn, I'm doing love and hip hop in 2014. So before love and hip hop, I'm putting my boots to the ground, getting a bunch of different placements. And then I was approached to do love and hip hop. And they like, yo, you should do this. At that point I was doing Nikki's album. I did like six records on a pink print. Really? I, mm -hmm, I was working with. That's a, I think that's like, is it pink print or pink Friday? That's like her pink print. Classic. Like okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was doing, I was with Nikki like every day. How do you get these placements? Because w when you started kind of reemerging mm -hmm. in, in the aspect of, Hey, this is a guy behind the hits. Mm -hmm. Usually, sometimes, like like people have like that that thought about a rapper, or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you're not that guy just because we know you buy these records. Mm -hmm. It looked like you were getting placements, so people yeah. were taking you serious. Yeah, for sure. I think um, so. The Nikki sh and like Nikki was like my best friend at the time. Like we would talk twenty four seven, and that was really random. I was um, I'm signed. Well, right now I have a joint venture with um, APG, but I was signed to Mike Karen at the time or whatever, and I just had my first placement. So I did a pub deal, and shout out to Mike Karen. I think he signed me for like twenty five thousand dollars to a pub deal. Really? He got me for the low. low when? And like this is like two thousand ten, eleven, something like that. I'm well, still signed to him today. It's thirteen years later, and I'm wait, still wait, why'd you sign for twenty five thousand? Think I had no money. Twenty five thousand was like a good vibe, <laughs> and he was giving me access to the studio and all the other stuff. So I'm like, yo, okay, so. What I try to do as well is try to give like some music education mm -hmm. to the people who, because some people don't even understand what a pub deal is, right? right? For the people who are behind the records and the making of these mm -hmm. records, when you when when they hear a pub deal, right. and especially for what you're doing, what mm -hmm. does that mean? So basically, someone is just basically advancing you the money that they feel like they're going to generate based off the placements that you already have and what your publishing can create. So either you go into a situation like I did. I had a, a, a few hits, some great records. Like, mind, mind you, John wasn't what it is now. And the Tamar Braxton cuts and fucking King Louis featuring Juicy J and Pusha T, my hoes do drugs. Like I, these records weren't like big, big, big records at the moment. So essentially, he believed in my talent and he was like, yo. You're a good guy. I want to give you a, a place, a facility to work out of, and I'm a bet on you. He took that bet on me, and I was gracious, and I was happy to be able to receive what I got from the situation. And fucking, we just hit the ground running and start working. And when you're dealing with, initially in your mind, now it's a different formula. In my mind, in 2010, 2011, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this deal with Mike Karen because Mike Karen's going to give me a bunch of cuts. He's the guy. He's the one that broke fucking Flo Rida, T-Pain, all these different writers. And then pretty much APG was the, hey, uh, listen, open up the book and go get a hit uh, exactly. for Atlantic. That's what right? I was thinking. Yeah, so that happened. Mike got me a few different placements at that time or whatever. And then I'm in Mike's studio, which ended up being a, a great thing for me. Pop and Oak had sent me a pack of beats or sent Mike a pack of beats or whatever. And I went in and I did a demo a hook for Nicki Minaj. And I named the song Nicki and Hitmaker probably Two days later, one of my friends, Sounds, who's a producer, he was bigger than me at the time, too. And he was working in a studio called Glenwood Studio in, in, um, in, in Glendale in L.A. And fucking, um, he like, come up here, let's just smoke. I'm working with Esther Dean artists or some shit like that. And I'm like, all right, bet I come up there, smoke, chill with him. My man, Doc, shout out to Doc. He was like, uh, Nicki Minaj in the A-Room. That's her studio. I'm like, for real? I just did this record. Go tell Nicki I, I want to play her some shit. Boom. He like the security said they gonna she gonna come get you in ten minutes. So I'm like, oh shit, it's about to go down. Boom, go to see Nikki. She's in there, super excited to be around her. I start playing records as I'm playing records. She going crazy. She going. Are, crazy. are you playing demos? You're playing your I'm playing records. Demos. I don't oh. do like, bro. I don't play beats for nobody. Every song that I've ever placed was a song already before the artist got it. So if it's for a rapper, the hook is already on it. If it's for an R&B oh, artist, so you, the song oh, so you got done. the wild reference track yeah, stash. I can play you Big Sean, Bounce Back, the fucking reference from that. A lot of people don't know me and Jeremiah and Sha Hoover wrote that hook. And that's how you didn't I, write Big Sean's part, though. No, we wrote okay. the hook. And that's how he was able to get that record. And that record is eight times platinum now. That shit damn near about to be diamond, too. So I come with a fucking... A folder of demos already and like I'm playing this I'm playing that she's going crazy and then Nikki was like I ain't gonna front I've been fucking with you ever since this and she played my song The Business Yeah, and it clicked to me it was like oh shit I was kind of like famous before Nikki career took off the way it did because I came out mm. with them songs in like 2007 yeah, 2008 yeah, yeah, yeah. so she was probably like upcoming you know what I'm saying on the rise and then from there when she played my record I'm like alright bet we locked in and I ain't gonna lie Nikki did the most solid shit ever she was like look bro 
I'm not here every day. This is your studio now. I believe in you. Come. Have all your friends come. Jeremiah, whoever you want to work with or whatever, come. And she just opened the studio up. And that's when we went on a crazy run together. And, like, we would go to concerts. I remember Soldier Boy was with me. Rich the Kid was with Soldier Boy. This one, Rich the Kid didn't even have dreads. This nigga had, like, a fade. And, yeah. like, she was doing, like, a summer jam in L.A. And that's when it first popped off. I think it's, like... She posted the pictures of me and like all the stuff on her social, and they were like, "What the fuck is Young Berg doing with Nicki Minaj?" Yeah, and I think it kind of like started correlating, like, "Oh shit, that nigga's a producer, that nigga's a writer, da da da." And when I was doing Love and Hip Hop, she was like, "Uh, I'm like, can I say your name? You know what I'm saying?" She was like, "Yeah, do do your shit," because she was close with Mona Scott. I think they had that mix Moscato at yeah, the time yeah, yeah, yeah. and all other shit. So she like, I ain't gonna lie, I do watch Love and Hip Hop. It was kind of like a guilty pleasure from her, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. And she was like, go ahead, say whatever you want to say. And the shit, that led to me just being on TV, like I'm working with Nicki. And then when the album came out and I had six records on the project, it solidified it. Wow. Hey, so, you know, from a, from a record, you know, and by the way, this is behind the scene, behind the curtain stuff in terms of creating these records. Mm -hmm. You said you don't play a record for an artist just the beat. No. You play them an idea or something of the sort. Yeah. Is, is, is that kind of like, is that the easiest way to kind of sell a record to an established artist or, or like, you know, get them to believe in it? Or is that just your method? Uh, I think it's, it's my, it's our method. Shout out to uh, like my crew make a sound. But in reality, I think that, all right, look, say I wanted to do a podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yo, um, not even want to do, say I'm just someone that's doing a podcast and then I walk in and I yeah. present you and I say, yo, here's the numbers. Here's what I'm doing. Here's my audience. And it's already built in. You're going to be like more like yeah, yeah, inclined yeah. to be like, all right, let's do it. Join the Academy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Let's do that. Like similar to how Troy Ave was doing yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. and then you believe in him. So if I got a demo that's already a hit mm -hmm. and you like, this shit is smash. All I got to do is fill in the blanks on this. It's just an easier process for the artist. 